So you will often get a scholarship application prompt. And um, most of the scholarship applications always ask about your participation in extracurricular activities. It is not necessarily asking you to list those activities as if you were just listing them on a resume. It is mostly asking you to think about your most uh, important extracurricular activities where you served in a leadership role. That's really what it's asking of you, that you were a leader in something and what was it that you did with that particular role? How did you influence and have an impact on people and what were the results? So describe your participation in extracurricular activities. It sounds broad, but it's, but it's really asking you to be focused and uh, participation is not just you being a member of the committee. Even if you wanted to reference that and you did a lot of work as a member of a committee in your extracurricular activity, that's fine. But eventually you're going to need one that tells the reader that you took on a leadership role or you assumed a lead role in a particular activity. So describe your participation in extracurricular activities. And then what have you learned from your experience? So examples may include community service, volunteer work, employment, school clubs, sports, family, church. And, you know, if you think about, if we look at the family aspect of these examples for a minute, um, if you come from a background where you have family reunions every year, or you, um, you got together the birthday party or the retirement party for your aunt or uncle or your mom or dad. To me, that's a leadership role in the family. Uh, you may not necessarily pay all the bills in the house or you may not be the parents, but that was important that you took some time to set a goal to um, have an event at the house. You endured that particular goal. You put the event on, everyone was happy with it and you completed the goal. And now you can sort of assess your contribution. What did you learn from that? That it takes time to sort of corral everybody. Uh, it takes time to schedule. It takes time to budget. And really what that is, is just a future uh, position as a coordinator or supervisor or manager, because what they are concerned with is scheduling, budgeting, and um, supervision or supervising. So supervising, budgeting, and scheduling. And that experience with putting on an event for the family or putting on an event at your church, that's really all, all that is, is budgeting, supervising, scheduling, right? And so if you make the connection to your field, what you did, while you were just in high school or something like that between high school and your field that's going to help a business admissions committee see that you understand just what business really is volunteer work i mean are you just volunteering all over the place or do you have a focus so if your focus is advocacy work and you volunteered at a homeless shelter it's easier to tailor your application that way, right? And then if you later decided to take a employment position there or, or something like that, and then you have done community service, maybe put on, um, maybe you had um, um, some sort of community project that you created in terms of a kitchen for the homeless or, um, um, you know, like a book drive or something like that for the homeless, or you went to the homeless shelters and gave a presentation, anything like that, 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 that suggests that you care about the thing that you are trying to become by starting to now work in it and do something with it. So what have you learned, of course, would be what new insight did you gain as a result of being exposed and as a result of engaging with that particular thing that you did. So, and it can be school clubs, it can be sports, right? You might've had an injury and you had to go through 
the healing process and recovery process, and then you are back on the field. So what have you learned from your experiences? And then describe your academic career short-term and long-term goals. You know, gone are the days where you could sort of float around on a feather or let the wind just kind of lead you to somewhere. Today, knowledge is getting very specific. Um, most, if not all, companies have to deal with, you know, technology. It's not like it's an option anymore. Um, now that social media has taken over the branding objectives of companies and things like that you have to have some sort of social media savvy not not be necessarily expert but be a user of of, of social media post and even people who work for companies those companies those employers expect their um employees to post on social media basically advocating for the brand and so you have to not only think about your immediate academic goals and your immediate uh, and your career goals, and then think about it in terms of long term, you have to take into consideration uh, web designing and um, having a portfolio, you know, a digital portfolio of things you do. Um, also being able to create sort of like little teaching videos because now even companies are getting into or are, are adding an academy tab right to their website so they can sell learning everything now is about instructional design little companies are now becoming um say like um a mini college or something like that because they want to get into the online learning game so these are goals that you also have to consider. It's, it can be kind of um, um, overwhelming, but this is where the world is taking us. And so when you think about your academic career, short-term and long-term goals, you may want to take a course in technology and any kind of technology course, um, you know, digital imaging or um, web design, even if it's just an introductory course or something like that. So the next scholarship application, who in your life has been your biggest influence and why? A lot of times people like to go for the parent, the mother or the father. And there's nothing wrong with a parent being an influence in your life and and providing the reasons why that is important. But you also have to know your parent. Your pa You just can't say my mama was a good mama because she was just a good mama. What is it about your mother or your father that is a big influence? Did they keep you all together? Did your mother work? Um, what type of work does she do? How has that work had an impact on you where there's some times she wasn't at home and you needed her and then there was some times she was at home and you needed her and then there was some times she was there and you didn't need her right was your is your mom a nurse you know what have you seen her in action have you shadowed her have you volunteered to be there and help her with something um how does your mother guide the home is your mother a single mother or are your father what does your father do so you have to know what they do in order for you to be able to convey the type of influence they have um, have had on your life not just the fact that they are a good mama and a good papa describe how you how you have demonstrated leadership ability both in and out of school and that's why I say those those questions that they ask you are really about leadership. Um, you don't necessarily have to be the boss of everything, but if you went to the leader of the group and said, I will take this on as a responsibility, now tell us what you did, how, what was the process, uh, what did you learn from it, and how did it support the larger uh, objective of trying to get something done so these are really leadership questions that they ask you um, 